In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint eye-catching textured cloth easily in only a few steps. To start with, I apply a base coat of Scale 75 Deep Red onto my model's cloth. I use Scale 75 paints for a lot of my tutorials, as that's what I have on hand and like to paint with. But of course the exact colors don't really matter here. And I think the techniques and workflow shown are far more important. It takes me a couple of layers to get this red base coat down, but I really want to make sure I get a full even coverage here or else the next steps won't look as good. If you've seen any of my other tutorials, you'll know that I really like sponging as it adds a ton of texture to my paint jobs without too much work. And at the end of the day, I am a pretty lazy painter. If you're not familiar with this technique though, it's pretty straightforward, but there are a few things to be aware of. First, the sponge you use is actually pretty important. And actually it's not even a sponge. Instead, I take a piece of foam from this Battle Foam Army case and tear a small chunk of it. You can get foam like this in a lot of different places, such as well, army transport cases, uh, blister packs sometimes have them, other packaging materials, things like that. When sponging, or well, foaming I guess, you do want to make sure that you dab the majority of the paint off of your foam, almost as if you were dry brushing. This is because if your foam still has too much paint on it, you won't get the fine applications of dots we're going for, and instead you'll get large smears of paint everywhere. For this red, I first do a pass of Antares red, making sure that I try to broadly hit all of the tops of the folds in the cloth. I then come back and do a little lighter application of Mars Orange. For this second pass, I try to follow where I already highlighted before with Antares Red with just a slightly softer touch so I don't leave as much paint behind. As usual, there are a couple of places where the sponge doesn't reach or that I wanted to push the highlights a little further. So all I do next is take some more Mars Orange on my detail brush and stipple on some final highlights. When doing this stippling step, I'm really not trying to highlight like you normally see by painting a thin line on the highest points of the fabric. Instead, I am semi-randomly applying small dots of this orange paint to continue building up the texture. Once I am happy with the highlights, I grab some Magos Purple Contrast paint and carefully apply this into the folds of the cape. As with most contrast paints, I love using this to shade because its transparent nature is great for modulating and darkening shadows but it never really becomes fully opaque. This means that I can apply multiple layers into the shadows to continue darkening them without risking them turning too purple or be a pure purple tone. And because it's rather thin, any errant brush strokes won't be so easily noticed. You can absolutely use a red contrast paint for this step, but I've found that the purple reddish coloration of Magos Purple is fantastic for shading red as the purple adds some eye-catching color contrast while still leaving the overall fabric reading as red to your eyes. I applied three or four layers of this shade, trying to apply it to a smaller and smaller portion of the shadow as I go, and that's pretty much it for this scheme. As you can see, in a couple of relatively easy steps, I've painted some nice textured, visually interesting cloth, which looks good from across the table. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you found it helpful or interesting, I want to support my channel, you can do so by continuing to watch my other painting tutorials, like this one here, on how I painted these custodes armor in an ancient weathered gold scheme. As always, thanks for watching and hobby on.